what's going on guys? Nick White, Joe Zitzelberger, The Dog Show with Nick and Joe, episode one. How's it going guys? What's going on? What's going on? Alrighty, so this is episode one. The big number one. We're gonna, I guess, learn as we go with this podcast stuff, yeah? Yeah, we're gonna get this all, uh, this podcast stuff worked out for you and we're gonna learn as we go, guys. So, uh, we don't really see each other a lot anymore. We've both been pretty busy here the last few months, yeah? Very busy. So, yeah, I mean, he lives like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes away, but I'm traveling nonstop and always on the road. And yeah, so maybe once a month at this point. So what's going on with you? Uh, staying busy, man. Um, just had Christmas. Glad that's over with. I'm one of those guys, I'm not necessarily against Christmas or anti-Christmas, I'm just not a, uh, a holiday spirit kind of guy. Are you? What's, what's, are you, uh, you know, a I, big holiday spirit guy? I get into it because of the kids and all that. Um, I would be lying if I said I wasn't ready for it to be over. I took a couple of weeks off uh, from training dogs to uh, kind of spend at home. With the, with the family, and I brought my nephew and niece up from North Carolina, so that was nice. And uh, But I'll, I'll be honest, I'm ready to get back to training some dogs. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm one of those guys that uh, I'm more excited for Christmas to be over than for it to arrive. Yeah, so. I, I feel the same way. I feel the same But way. yeah, I've been busy, man. Um, got yeah. awesome uh, tracking property for us now. Yeah, I saw. I, I just, saw uh, just closed on a 193 acre property here in Fauquier County, which is where I currently live. So we're going to put out some amazing tracking dogs is going to come out of that place. I'll tell you that much. Maybe some agility courses in the future. We can, we can do 10 Olympic sized swimming pools and 30 agility courses if we need to. You know, that's something we don't offer is agility that's something that maybe we should look into i know we get a lot of inquiries about uh their dogs wanting to do agility and you know it'd be nice to have somewhere to bring my personal dogs to you know jump over <laughs> i don't know boards and <laughs> hurdles <laughs> and a-frames and all that fun stuff yeah it's funny you mentioned that because actually a lot of people ask like oh what services do you guys offer and i literally my saying back to them is I say, we do everything except agility. And they're like, well, what do you mean everything? I'm like, we do everything in the world of dog training except agility. We do detection, we do protection, we do diabetic alert dogs, we do therapy dogs, we do tracking dogs, we do obedience, we do behavior modification. So, I mean, we literally do almost every major discipline in dog sports with the exception of agility. And do you think a lot of that is just due to, you know, we haven't had the land for it or? No, I mean, I, there's really no reason. I've just never, uh, we've, I've never had a trainer because, as you know, we have trainers, off leash canine wide, uh, with amazing backgrounds in the world of dog training. I mean, we have Jacob Robinson, who's former Marsoc canine. I mean, we have, you know, Willie, who was doing detection of dogs with Marines in Iraq, and uh, you know, former police department canines, and literally the list goes on and on. Uh, but. And we've had some of the best detection guys. Again, Jacob Robinson, he was at uh, Von Lick Kennels uh, as one of their guys out there, and they put out the best detection dogs in the world. We have Luther McDonald, who yeah. is the Special Forces yeah, for tracking sure. instructor at Von Lick Kennels. So we have an amazing, uh, we have over 315 trainers at this point, and we have a huge variety. But out of all those, we've never had a guy or a girl that was like, agility is my m mastery. You know, we've had the detection guy, the tracking, protection. I'm the guy for the you know, obedience. but we, I know, So I think it's just out of the nature of how it's worked out. We've never really had anyone that pushed it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Maybe we should uh, see, what the, uh, see what our fans think, and, see what our clients think. Yeah, and I'm sure I'll take some flack from this, but, <laughs> from this, but I just, uh, I feel like, um, I'm trying to think. How to say it? Like, I, I feel like it's a very female-dominated sport. Not oh, female. Jesus. No, not not female competitive sport where it's only females that do agility. I'm not saying that because I know better. But I just feel like it's a very um, female kind of. I don't know. I don't know, man. 
I feel like it's a lot of females and instructors that do it, and we just haven't came upon any of them that has came onto Off Leash Canine. You know, we have all the alpha male tough guy stuff, you know, the tracking, detection, bomb dogs, drug dogs. You know, we have all of, you know, French ring, and we have all those people covered in Off Leash Canine. We just don't have anyone in Off Leash Canine that has came to us with the experience and said, hey, I'm a huge agility guy, and I would love to bring this to your business. Well, well I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, there's obviously uh, a lot of the different aspects of dog training that I that I know and understand, and that's that's one of them that I really don't have any experience with. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and this is completely ignorant of me, ad admittingly, um, you know, agility is, you know, jumping over things and going through things and, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll do some digging into it. Yeah, I mean, it's just never been my thing. Um, and again, that's, I think that's the reason is we've never had anyone come into Off Leash Canine and say, this is my thing. Um, an amazing competitor at this sport. I'm an amazing instructor of the sport. And I think I could, um, you know, help you guys offer this throughout the company, so I, I think that's the only reason why. Don't get me wrong, I think agility's amazing. I've never done it. I mean, every every uh, protection dog is an agility dog, essentially. So every agility, or every protection dog is an agility dog. If you think about protection dogs and their training, you know, we have right. Cody Talon, and Jacob Robinson, and all these awesome guys in, in our Morris, company, yeah. that, and Joey Morris at Alpha Training Center. Uh, what are they doing with their protection dogs? They're doing A-frame walls. Yeah, they're sure. jumping over fences. They're jumping in car windows. So, you know, every protection dog essentially is uh, a low-level well, I, I, I agility dog. Kind of a cool story about that. So, as you know, I just got a new pup, Diesel D2, uh, from Joey Morris over at Alpha uh, Training Center. Yeah, great dog. Yeah, 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 he's, man, dude's a savage, bro. He is. He's, uh, he's extremely social and, you know gets along with the kids and the other dogs and anyhow so we are I was over at uh, one of my trainers uh, I call it a compound he's got a lot of land um, out in uh, where is it Corret Virginia is where he's at Sean's house and he's building a little agility park just to run his dog just for fun and stuff and so we went out there to go do some some bite work with the dogs and he had a uh, six foot wall that he built up um where you can you know remove the planks and make it five foot and so yeah, on that's so the wooden the wooden right the well, walls. well when i got diesel um assuming it was because he was new to me or whatever i had issues getting him jumping in the truck and uh, <laughs> like literally and i'm like man you're a mal you i know you can jump maybe you just don't realize you can jump and you know uh joey morris uh trained him Initially, um, you know, did all the, the the hard work or whatever. So, you know, he even told me he was like, "No, this guy can jump, man." So, we are uh, we're, we're over there, and I have him. We're just kind of hanging out, and we're standing like literally right in front of this this wall that Sean built, and Diesel's just in a down in front of it. And man, I don't know if I said something or if I made a movement or whatever. But I shit you not, this dog f leaped like like he just grew wings all of a sudden and just flew over this six-foot wall. And I was like, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> so, you know, for me, it would be awesome to have uh, an agility park just for my personal dogs. And I know if I would benefit from it, I, I know the clients would benefit from it too. So it's definitely something that... Uh, think we should look into and at least I mean it, you guys tell us if, if you're interested in, in agility uh, reach out to us info at offleashk9training.com and um, you know let us know your thoughts let us know uh, if you have any experience that you can share with us you know one thing I can say about Nick and I is we're always I would say we're always willing to learn uh, new things from new people and you know see if we can use it to our benefit, and we can, we use it, and if not, then we don't, you know? Yeah, I feel like there's, uh, in, in any dog sport or event, whether it's agility, tracking, detection, obedience, um, diabetic alert dog, I mean, the list goes on and on. What I've learned in doing all those is there's always something that you can take away from every sport 
uh, and apply it to other things. Like you've probably heard me talk, like when I'm talking to new trainers about detection or something, I'll say, well, it's kind of like an obedience where da da da. And then for protection, it's like, oh, well, it's kind of like a detection, you know? So I feel like there's a lot of things that cross over into the other yeah. sectors and are beneficial to each other. And like I said earlier, I mean, every protection dog kind of is an agility dog with their training. So yeah, for sure. if you go out to my friend, Bob Salamini's uh, in Phoenix, he puts out some of the most amazing dogs there are, uh, multi French train national champion, list goes on and on. If you watched his mouths and duchies, you would think that he was running uh, an agility course. Yeah. I mean, they're going over walls, they're doing jump, you know, 12, 13 foot jumps. I mean, so it's, yeah, it's I mean, just a modified the, thing. These dogs are, I mean, these, these sport dogs, these police canines, you know, the military working dogs. I mean, these dogs, I mean, these, these guys have no fear. I mean, I feel like agility is naturally you know, a part of their uh, genetics as far yeah. as, you know, how high they can jump and how far, like, you know, I, I, I get, always get amazed when I watch D2 bite because especially if it's a send away or a send out, I mean, dude is jumping from what looks to be 15 to 20 feet away. And I have some pictures of him just, you know, Superman just, and that dude just completely <laughs> flat in the air. And it's just like, you know, a lot of these dogs are, are built for this kind of stuff. So, anyhow, uh, definitely reach out, guys, if, if it's something that would interest you. Um, and, you know, we'll look into it. So, so what do you have going on up? Yeah, know, I, got a lot, I got a lot lined up, man. Um, let me see. Uh, so, next uh, two weeks, I go to uh, Milan, Italy to train a dog for a family there, a seven-month-old German Shepherd. Or sorry, not Milan, Naples, Italy. Uh, sorry about that. I'm going to Naples, Italy, uh, January 11th, to train a dog for a family out there, so literally less than two weeks away. I don't even think I knew about that one. Yeah, well, my I don't even know about them until usually the day before. So, so I got that going on, and then uh, I'm there for like nine or ten days, and then I get back from there and just literally yesterday I was uh, booked for training for two dogs in Austin, Texas uh, by a woman many people know. Uh, her, name, her name's Mia Khalifa. If hmm. you don't know, I normally say Google them, but um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, she has two Morkies I'll be training down there in Austin and that's uh, February 5th through the 15th. And then February 27th, I go up to Jersey Shore <laughs> to train Vinny. If yeah, you guys have yeah. seen the show uh, uh, Jersey Shore, Vinny. Man, I'm that was my. To train I'm, I'm, I gotta. Let, I gotta be honest. That was. I've literally watched every single episode <laughs> of every season. I was obsessed for a while. I don't watch TV much, um, uh, but I, I I totally watched every episode. I, I don't know, man. I can honestly say. Legitimately, I've never watched one episode of Jersey Shore ever. It's just, I'm not saying it's a bad show, or I don't watch that much TV to begin with, but I've never watched one episode. It, it's it's addicting. So I'm there uh, the end of February up in Jersey Shore till March. And who, who are you training up there? Uh, Vinny from Vinny. Jersey Shore. And then April, I go to Auckland, New Zealand to train a dog for a family there. Uh, so yeah, I got a busy... Uh, first quarter 2018 coming up. Yeah, uh, good stuff. Yeah, what else? Um, oh, Joe, for those of you that don't know, Joe owns Off Leash Canine in Richmond. And just, uh, you guys, I would say most of you guys probably seen this on the news. Maybe what, three weeks ago? A very, I mean, it was tragic. Um, three weeks ago, probably, uh, there was a. It was a little bit longer, I think. Okay, Maybe. yeah. Uh, yeah, probably. I would say it's three weeks ago. It? Yeah, I mean, f check it out. Uh, but you guys probably saw in the news there was a 22-year-old lady down in Richmond, right? She was in Richmond, Gucci right? Like yeah, Gucci Line was pretty much the same. Um, she was in Richmond. Uh, Bethany Lynn Stevens, uh, you guys may have seen on the news, very tragic, where she had two pit bulls. Uh, she took them for a walk. Well, the initial story was she took them for a walk, and... She was gone for a long time, essentially. And then her dad got suspicious, started checking the woods, and long story short, cops show up, and the two pit bulls that she's had, I don't wanna say her, their whole lives, because I'm not that confident on that, but these two pit bulls that she had 
were literally, I mean, it sounds graphic and it's a horrible tragedy, but they were literally, the cops said, like, eating her. Like, when they got there, the well, dogs were it, eating, like, her rib cage. It, it took a while for them to release that, and I think the reason why, it was, it was a very controversial story when it came out because, you know, the police didn't really release a whole lot of information. They just said, oh, by the way, this lady was mauled to death in the woods by her two pit mixes and I think it's important that we, we include that that they were mixed breeds but um, that she was mauled by her two dogs and, and that's pretty much the information that, uh, that that we got and then you know a lot of people started questioning and like wait a minute that doesn't you know, make sense what, what is going on here and they're like oh no we know for a fact uh, that the dogs did yeah, it there, but they didn't a, release there was a bunch of conspiracy theories I think that's what forced the law enforcement to provide these more graphic details because like you said initially they just said oh this woman was mauled to death by her two dogs and then there was all these conspiracy theories that came out he was like no way her dogs wouldn't have done that it was a cover up da -da -da. Well, and then they released yeah, exactly. more information I think they only did that because they kind of their hand was forced by like kind of public outcry you know, saying you guys aren't doing your jobs like you need to investigate this further you know, you know it's definitely an odd story and you know there's been several um, I guess facts from the police that have been coming in uh, sporadically over the last few weeks and you know kind of now somewhat I guess putting the pieces to the puzzle together it, you know if that's what you want to say but you know it, when this story came out it, obviously heartbreaking our thoughts you know definitely go to her family and yeah, her tragic um, but when it came out it just didn't add up man you know what I mean it just no. didn't add up it's like it never so, does. so from my understanding she had these two dogs from eight weeks old, from puppies. Uh, is that uh, is that official? I wasn't sure if she raised I, them. Right. I don't know. I mean, there's so many stories. It's hard to say. You know. I mean, I'm on what CBS and, six. And, here. and just and just to point out a, a random fact to clarify for everyone out there is uh, there, there's no dog that's inherently more dangerous than any other. That's pretty much a, a proven factual statistic that there's the there's no dog that's more inherently aggressive towards people than any other breed so um, yeah, yeah and yeah. and to add to that that you know you always see pit bull pit bull pit bull when about 50 percent of those are actually don't turn out to be pit bulls uh, when you just don't hear about them you know right? people see a dog and says oh that's a pit bull when a lot of times they're lab mixes right, and, right, right, right. but it's a literal statistic fact i think from the uh uh, veterinary and medical association journal that 50 percent of them are misidentified when they actually go to take dna from them that they're not even pit bulls so, so people see the box head and yeah they automatically assume certain sizes. yeah it's kind of like people you know there was a commercial on i think it was like ancestry.com commercial uh, i don't want to give them too much of a shout out but they uh there was a commercial where they had all those people in the room and there's like a white guy and it, and then they're like and you would say oh that's a white guy you know he's an american and then they're like he was 37 percent jewish eight percent you know african-american nine percent and then he was like ten percent american or something yeah. and they have those those all the time on like ancestry.com and dna things so it's same with dogs like you can't look at someone and say, oh, you're American, and then a DNA test shows that you're actually like 20% American, so. Well, and I think that's why it's important that we at least call them, you know, mixed breeds, because we don't, in fact, know. There's no DNA on these dogs, uh, as far as I'm aware. But so anyhow, so she gets these she gets these two pups at eight weeks old. I, I read that she, her, one of her good friends was a trainer, and you know she she was previously into horse training um anyhow she gets she gets these two dogs hooks up with her training friend maybe helps her at, you know at training or becomes a trainer for a short period of time and then <clears throat> several of the articles say you know she had a amazing relationship with these two dogs they lived in the house with her she took them on hikes every day and you know so on and so forth and uh then I read a lot of articles that in the latter part of her life that she got into some drugs and I guess things got rough. Again, this is all 
you know, I don't, I don't know if this is a hundred percent fact. These are just, this is just coming from some of the articles that I've read, but that's a pretty consistent one. And I guess, so she was going through a rough patch and she brings the dogs to dad's house and says, you keep the dogs. Um, and dad says, that's cool, you know, they can stay here, but they're not my responsibility. Yeah. In fact, I just read an interview. He pretty him, much, like, left them. He just put them out back, back in the In the pen. kennel, like, yeah. out back of his house. So they were dogs that were used to being in a home, and now they're isolated by themselves right. in a random backyard in a crate or a kennel all of a sudden. And, and he even said he wasn't going to feed them. Um, and so she agreed that she would come over daily, take them out. Well, what, I, what I read is uh, she came four to five days a week. Well, that's... <laughs> I, I, so once we get into our theories on this, that's kind of part of mine is how often she came, blah, 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 blah. We'll get into that. So anyhow, so she comes, she comes out to... Uh, to dad's house and you know whatever lets the dogs out feeds them I'm, I'm not totally sure the exact of what she did when she got there uh, goes from the story says goes hiking with them in the woods normal spot where she uh, would take them and a day later uh, dad said where is she at was it that much later like the next day from my understanding man it was like a 24 hours. Oh, okay. yeah. I think I'd have been like, hey, where is she after like uh, two uh, hours? I mean, that part definitely when I, when this story initially came out, was like, oh, that's, that's a little weird, but you know, whatever. Um, but anyhow, so then, you know, the police, or he called the police, and then he actually found her, and the initial reports were that the dogs were uh, guarding her body. Yeah, that was the, that was what they came out with initially, and they couldn't they couldn't get the dogs. So they, I think they actually shot them with the tranquilizer to get them. Yeah, I don't I don't remember how they. I know they got them without killing them though. And uh, I believe that next Saturday they did end up euthanizing the dogs. Yeah, um, they did. Rightfully I know, so. I know I know a lot of friends, and um, I'm not sure family members, but I know a lot of her friends from some of the interviews I've read with them. Um, were highly against uh, euthanizing the dogs until they got all the facts, which I, yeah, I get, right? They want to make sure it's not like part of the conspiracy. And and so this story obviously started off in Goochland, and I mean, I hell, I saw it on oh, it's nationwide, maybe CNN, worldwide. I think. I, yeah, I saw it on CNN last yeah, week. Yeah, it's maybe so, worldwide. So a lot of what's happening is a lot of uh, animal advocates and groups are com you know were coming out and saying. You know, don't put that put those dogs down essentially until you guys figure out you know what the hell happened. Like, yeah, you can't just say that this the dogs the, yeah. the dogs did it and you know see you later. You got to actually come up with facts. So that's when they actually released that the dogs were were eating. Yeah, yeah, eating her ribs and yeah, like literally eating her. Uh, you know, when that story first came out, like I mean, before we knew this stuff, when it first came out, obviously, anytime dog stuff comes out, I get probably hundreds of texts from all kinds of people. Um, they're like, "What do you think about this? What do you think about this?" Uh, from from my perspective, and I can only speak on my opinion, which is everything that we both do. I mean, it's it's our personal opinions on this. But from my expert opinion, I would even say, is I personally have never, ever, ever seen or worked with a dog that just snapped, ever. I I've never saw a dog that I thought was extremely social, highly confident, extremely well-trained, like good demeanor, good temperament, and all of a sudden it just snapped and became a savage. I've literally never seen that or even really heard of that in my entire training career around dogs have you have you ever seen a dog that was like a therapy dog that you would be like this is the best dog ever and then it just no but tried to rip out your throat all of a sudden no no absolutely <laughs> not but i mean it does go along with what you always say and what i always say and what we tell the trainers and stuff is you know no dog is aggressive until it is until it is but that's true. As I always say, no dog has ever bit anyone until it's bit anyone. No dog has ever attacked another dog until it's attacked another dog. But even then, what I'm saying is, even then, it, 
I would be surprised by it. Like, I've never even seen that that's surprised me. Because generally there's traits leading up to it. It's like, oh, well, you know, he could be a little sketchy around dogs, or he's a little dominant around dogs. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, he loves dogs, never has an issue, super chill, super neutral, not submissive, not alpha, like, and he just snapped and now he's killed three people. So, so I've never, and I even would say the same with school shooters and people. You know, people, if you look at school shooters, because I like to, you know, talk about dogs and people a lot and, uh, together collectively, and even if you look at people, I've never seen a school shooter uh, or someone like that or a mass murderer that just snapped. One that was, like, super popular, super social, high confidence. Like, once they do it, every time there's, a, like, a school shooting or anything, once it happens, you always see they dig into their background. Yeah. And they're like, well, he was a loner. He was on antidepressants. Played. He... Violent video games. Yeah, I played games. violent video yeah. games. He was on this web forum every week talking about all these different things. So it was never like, once you can see the whole picture, it was never like, oh, this kid was valedictorian, well-liked, super confident, super social. He loved everyone, and he just snapped. Like, I've yeah. never seen that. So so before we get into theories, um, my theory is the dogs did it. <laughs> super simple theory. Fair. <laughs> Um, I will make a disclosure. We actually have never talked about this with never, each other. No, uh, and is, that's and that's what we plan to do with all these shows. Because if so, you get the real Nick and Joe versions of our thoughts. So well, before we even go any further into this, what you guys have to understand is, you know, Nick and I are, are really really good friends. We have been since we've uh, you know been essentially knowing each yeah. other, um, but. We are uh, we we argue a lot more than anyone, yeah. Um, so and and it's because he feels so strongly about his opinion sometimes, <laughs> and I feel so a lot of it sometimes is business or whatever. And uh, so that that's what you guys are going to get in this is you're going to get like him and I are sitting around a table and and just kind of shooting the shit with each other and. If, if Whatever it, happens, happens. And I would have to assume, maybe not this episode, maybe not the seventh, but I would have to assume at some point um, things are going to get heated between you and I. I'm so, sure. so anyhow, so, so that's so, my theory. So the, the dogs, dogs did it. the dogs did. Yeah, what, that's my theory. Is I mean, is that it? Yep, yeah, I think oh, it's that okay. simple. So, so pretty much, and I'll back it for a couple minutes, and then I'll let you have yours. So. So social, ongoing socialization is extremely important in dogs. I, I did a video like three years ago. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, I, I did a five-part series on confidence building in dogs, and one of those five parts was socialization with dogs, how to do it, why to do it, the importance of it. It was just a 20-minute video on that. And five years ago in this video, I said that what people forget is ongoing socialization is important. It's not one of those things that... You can do it from zero to one and be like, oh, he's good. Now I'm just going to move him in a kennel in the back of a house for six months with no contact with people or dogs and he should still be good. It doesn't work like that. And amazingly enough and interestingly enough, it doesn't work like that with people either. Um, you can see all kinds of news stories if you read on or Google it or do any research with guys or, and women, more guys, um, who are 30, 40, 20 years old, well socialized their whole life, they go to prison, they do something, and they get put in isolation, right? Yeah. And you can read stories about, you know, people that spent like a week or two weeks or a month in the hole, you know, the isolation right. where they're cut off from all interaction with people, like sure. everything. And you can read like they literally like it drives them crazy. There was a good social uh, video. You guys can probably YouTube it. I would YouTube like no social contact for five days or something along those lines on YouTube. And a guy just locks himself in his house, no cell phone, no TV, no Wi-Fi, nothing. Just in his house for five days. And he talks about like it's pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's five days. Yeah. And that, that's like oh, but a 30-year-old who's interacted and socialized every day of his life. So I think it has the same effect on dogs that it has on people. And I even would say it probably has a more profound effect on dogs than it does people. Because people, we have, um, you know, like free thought to the point, or dogs have free thought too, but we have free thought to the point where I can say, all right, I'm going to do this experiment for five days. 
and then I'm done. I'm going to pick up my phone. I'm going to call Joe. I'm going to go have a beer. So you can, you know, kind of plan mentally for that. Like, all right, I'm here by myself for a w- It's only a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where a dog doesn't know if it's going to be a day, a week, six months, a year till his owner comes back. So I think it's uh, isolation and lack of socialization has a more profound effect on dogs than it does people. And To, and, to that level, though? And Well, I was going to say, let me say, this isn't like, it may be, I don't know, but I'm, I'm not presenting that to you as a scientifically fact thing. That's just right. my opinion. Um, well, I don't know those dogs... Uh, See, the, the thing is, is we don't know how those dogs are treated, uh, and they may have been treated great, so uh, I don't, I, I don't want to blame anyone, but we don't know how they were treated. What we do know, when that, for, when that for story first broke, right, and all we knew was two dogs mauled the owner to death, I got sure. a bunch of texts, and people's like, so what do you think about this? What's, from a trainer, what's your perspective? And I'm like, there's more to the story, because there always is. It's no, anytime I've seen stories like that, there's always more to the story. And then they came out, like, three days later, where it's like, okay, they were isolated, they were thrown in a kennel, she was showing up four to five days a week to just feed the dogs and leave, and didn't have that much calm. I'm like, ah, oh, now, yeah, now the story's starting to come out. And those are things that we know. We don't know how they were raised, we don't know how they were treated, maybe it was great, I don't know. But I do know when that story first broke, I said there's more to this story. It's not it's not this lady that spends every day with the dogs and loves them and they're amazing, well-tempered dogs and all of a sudden they just snap. Because again, I've never seen that happen in the world of dog training ever. So so you think it was a build-up? Yeah, you I think, think it was. They... Just like with people, just like school shooters. It's a build-up. It's, yeah. it's a process over time that the depression or isolation continues, the medication... You know they're getting picked on at school, and it, it's it's a it's a process, a build up process, and I think it's the same thing with dogs as, is, and again, I, you know, and as you guys know, I love controversy, like I love yeah. it, so I love being a savage on on things, like I take pride in it, and and I talk about like you never see these, maybe once or twice, I don't know, but you never see them. Like, this dog was a certified therapy dog. He was in an extremely good home. They did tons of training with this dog. Yeah. They took this dog everywhere. When it, you, you never see it when it happens. It's never circumstance. I've never seen circumstances like that. It's like dogs are tied up in the backyard. They weren't socialized. They're abused. They were never interacted with other dogs or people. Like, it, that's all, it's always the same stories, regardless of the breed. Yeah, and and a lot of a lot of theories are out there. You know, I guess uh, she had a death threat a couple of days before, and and when this story first came out, you know, I'm I'm listening to that, you know, reading about that, and reading about how um, she had a few reports said that she had gotten into some bad times, maybe with drugs. Um, so you know, I started thinking, you know. Especially when the story initially came out, because I was kind of like everybody else. I was like, "Wait a minute, family and friends." Doesn't make sense. Family and friends are saying she's had two dogs since eight weeks old, and I, not at the not right. She didn't. Let's clarify. She didn't get both dogs at the same time. Yeah, uh, she did get the one, the, the second one, just a little bit later. And I think that one, if I remember right, was like she got it because it was like in an abusive home or something i think I yeah i'm, not, saw I'm not i'm not sure about that but so you know you read that she had these dogs since they were puppies essentially uh there's pictures all over the internet with her and you know yeah, the like dogs. Car rides and yeah i mean they're smiling they're happy and yeah. so and then you know all of a sudden they they kill her like it, it just struck me as extremely odd so i you know i started actually i had uh one of one of my trainers came over one night and we were hanging out, Brandon, and um, we were kind of talking about this when it first uh, released a few days after. And you know, I was he asked me what my thoughts were on it, what my theory was on it. And I oh, said, here, what's what's Joe's theory? Well, at first, I, I really <laughs> didn't know, man. Like, I just I'm I'm a I'm a fact person. Yeah, I like to have my facts. I don't like to to say Shoot it off the cuff. exactly because. You know, I'll be honest, I don't like to be wrong, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's reasonable. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to read everything and, and, and see everything. And then uh, he came back and he said, 
Well, I'm about to solve the mystery. Uh oh. And especially Brandon. This is yeah. No. So, <laughs> so I said, all right, let me hear it. And he told me his theory on this, and I said, shit, man, that's it. I'm excited now. Like, I, this I, is the first time I've heard this theory. I was so like, I'm interested. I was like, that that's that's a hundred percent it. There's not a doubt in my mind. So and and it's a theory I'm, coming from Brandon and backed by you scares me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, take that for what it's worth, right? But you know, it's I, what what's odd to me is that this has not been brought up. All right. Well maybe you're gonna crack the case. Let's hear it. I'm ready. We may be doing it. All right. So the two dogs that she got is confirmed that they came from the same litter. Uh, someone, someone here commented she owned one dog since it was a puppy and right. took its brother back in when he had been bounced around to two different homes and right. abused. Right. So again, there's always more of the story. But, Starts off with a sketchy but dog. But they are litter mates. Okay. Um, Which is a bad idea. Too. And there is something out there <laughs> called litter mate syndrome. Yeah. And for those... I mean, I'm not going to dig deep into, we can go for hours talking about litter mate syndrome. It's a bad idea to get litter mates in, across the board. Extremely bad idea. So that's all we need to... Um, but it is actually a thing, you know? And, and so what happens is, just kind of breaking this down, is, you know, dogs are born, puppies are born in the same litter. If they go to the same household, what happens is, is that, just say it's two... These two dogs, they form such an incredible primal, I think that's the key word here. Like a pack bond. bond. Yeah. That it's easy for them to not get attached to the human. Uh, they become independent. They become too independent, yeah. right? So my Brandon's theory, which is now my theory, I'm still <laughs> in credit for this one. Thanks, Brandon. Um, is, you know, she gets these two dogs, uh, litter mates. Yep. She was a very good and responsible pet owner for most of their lives. Keyword? Most. most. Right. For most of their lives. And so she integrated herself into this pack and they accepted her. And maybe she made herself the pack leader. I mean, not sure. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty irrelevant to this. But either way, she was in the pack and she was accepted by those two. So she hits hard times. She brings the dogs to dad's house. Dad throws them in the back of the house in the pen. And uh, now their whole lives have just changed a hundred percent. They're used to being indoor dogs, yeah. being fed regularly, seeing mom regularly, going on hikes and walks and all that to all of a sudden they're sleeping outside, they're living outside, they're only being fed four to five days a week at max, yeah. right? And only once yeah. at that. And so what do they do? These two dogs, they their instincts kick in and this litter mate syndrome is back into full effect. They have detached her as a pack member at this point. Right now all she is to them is uh, a source occasional of, food source. A source of food, right? Occasional source of food. So, uh, the, the, uh, who's the, what's the name of the guys that do the autopsy? Uh, whatever. The coroner? I don't think that's the actual name. Oh. Um, anyhow, whatever. Whoever does. Doctor. Does. Yeah. The doctors who did the autopsy, um, they did confirm that she was also, uh, on her menstrual cycle. Yeah, I saw that. So, so hear the, hear me out here. So she... She's detached from, from the pack, right? And she's feeding, you know, four or five times a week, whatever, whatever, whatever. She gets these dogs. She takes them out for a hike. All of a sudden, these dogs turn into extremely primal, dominant style dogs because they have had to, essentially, right? They've had no choice but to kind of click back into this uh, littermate syndrome and rely only on each other. And, and when I say rely only on, it, on each other with littermate syndrome, like, there's nobody else. Nothing else matters, right? That's, that's I would totally suggest uh, everyone listening to research <laughs> littermate syndrome. And uh, so my theory is that they walk out into the woods and... Um, the do one of the dogs or both of them, they, they smell it. 
they smell and they sense that she is on her period. And one of the dogs, or both of the dogs, because they're so primal-minded at this point, they try to mount her, which is not uncommon. Yeah. As you know, with, with very... Normal dogs. Yeah. Ex exactly. And so I feel like that they tried to mount her. She and and they it. very, very... The reports, uh, they really emphasized that her hands were really, really bad. Yeah, like defensive ones. Exactly. So that's kind of the theory, is these dogs tried to mount her, and she tried to go into defense... And protect ourselves, and at that point, the the switch is flipped. I mean, they're they're at their full. You know, they they're hungry, they're neglected, they're pissed, and they suffer from litter mate syndrome. I mean, to me, case solved. Yeah. Right. I mean, depend. I mean, were they raised together though? For from my understanding, for. When she got the second dog, it wasn't too long after she got okay. her first dog. So it wasn't like a year and a half? No, 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 no. I don't even... Man, yeah, I don't, I'm I don't trying to think of how old these dogs were. I think a couple years old, I'm not sure. Either way, um, tragic. Tragic as hell, right? Um, you know, it's, it's... Whether, you know, it was due to partial or full neglect or, you know, something kind of... Loose upstairs in the dogs, you know, and they feed off each other. Like we had those boxers. Um, do you remember those two boxers? That was, that, that was years ago. Oh, it was a long time ago. Moose and Squirrel. <laughs> I yeah. still remember. And, Moose and we've squirrel. done tens of thousands of dogs since then. Uh, but they gave us video footage from the kennel they were at, and where they came in, and the kennel tech came in to to clean. And they, they get worked up, like super worked up, excited. And then they're excited, untrained boxers who are litter mates. Uh, just throw that out there. Uh, but they were litter mates. And they're getting excited. She's trying to clean. And they're like, you know, jumping up on her, jumping up on her. And literally, we saw this footage. I used to have it. And, and so she's the, the kennel tech workers, like pushing them, you know, like mm. pushing them off. So now they're coming harder. And then one of them, like, you know, like, nips her in the arm or the leg. I forget which one now. And she's like, ah, and, like, kind of drops down. And then the other one, oh, they like, hits her. And then boom, boom. And yeah. then they just kept tagging her back and forth. And luckily, she was in the small kennel room. And you see, like, she pushes them and then, like, shuts the door and gets out of there. And I think the owners who end up signing them up with us um, end up coming in that room, like, when they got off work or came from work or whatever the situation was and they kind of round them up but um so yeah it's kind of so imagine if you're if it was that situation and they were small then i think they were like seven months old so they i don't know like maybe four do you remember who each. trained those dogs was it yeah uh myself and another trainer okay so you I were a part of this okay yeah. so do you remember if and i know that was years ago um but do you remember if they were difficult to train, like not 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 change behavior, uh, just teaching commands. Yeah. Um, do, do you remember? Because no. I mean, the reason why I asked that because I remember when I first got started with off leash, I took in four Dobermans um, at the same time. I'll never do that again. By the way, oh, I remember that. Yeah, four Dobermans, that. and they were all litter mates. Oh, so and cool. uh, I can remember when I picked those dogs up. Uh, at our old facility in Richmond and she's telling them to down like all four of them separately and together she's she's telling all these dogs to uh, um, do these commands and they were doing it right so I was like oh cool Easy. you know this is gonna be pretty simple they're dobies they're you know statistically you know very intelligent dogs and you know everything should be pretty pretty chill so I got these four Doberman uh, home and Started the training process, and man, I'm gonna tell you what, <laughs> they made it pretty tough on you. Huh? I couldn't get these dogs, none of them, whether they were together or separate or whatever, I couldn't get these dogs to sit to save my life for the first few days. And and in my mind, I'm like, man, I, clearly I know you know how to sit because yeah. your owner showed me this. 
showed me that you know how to do it and you did it flawlessly every time, all four of you together, separate, whatever. You know, why, you know, obviously my, as a trainer, my initial thoughts are, you know, they just don't, they, they're like, you know, screw you. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and ultimately that is what it turned out to be. Um, to where, you know, we kind of had to earn each other's respect and trust and all that stuff. And to welcome you into the pack. Welcome you into the <laughs> pack. But you know what, man? Like, I go back and I look at that and I'm like, man, that they had litter mate syndrome written all over oh, yeah. them. Four at a time. That's, that's Because, a it, you know, it's, you know, sometimes we get dogs to where it's, you know, it, it takes a little bit longer than average to kind of develop that bond and trust and get them to understand that, you know, you're a good guy and, you know, you just want them, you know, to learn and all this stuff and whatever. But this was like exceptionally long. Like it it, it took longer than it ever has. And it, it just struck me as odd because it was, you know, four very intelligent dogs. But, you know, again, you read up on that uh, litter mate syndrome that, that, I mean, that explains it. You know, so that is my theory. If they were raised together, primarily. Yeah, correct, correct. Which they were, because I, I don't remember the whole story, but I know they had seven. Yeah, but I, I think it's uh, as cut and dry as it sounds. Dogs under socialized, isolated, not being fed regularly. Uh, the one we know that she got back was in a pretty crappy situation. So, I mean, it, it kind of, what I feel is it created the perfect storm. Um, you know, you take all those, like any of those one factors are bad, like isolating your dog with no socialization for a couple months and that's bad on a, you know, that can do some things in its own right. Yeah. And now you add, okay, feeding them four to five times a week, that's bad in its own right. Then sure. you add, you know, new environment, the dog was in an abusive situation, that's bad in its own right. And then we don't even know the, the, the breeding of the dogs, the genetic, you know, maybe they have a... You know, I actually recently uh, read this thing on dog genetics, and they said that 40% of a dog's social ability, uh, its ability to be like social, 40% of that, I think it was 36% actually, 36% of that is gene based. So, and then 50%, Man, which is huge. You have a lot of stats yeah, in, I read that, in that brain. And, and then 50%. Of a dog's temperament, whatever the dog has as a temperament, fifty percent of that is genetic based. Yeah. So if you fact, and which is huge, you know, fifty percent. Some people think like, oh, that doesn't sound that high, but like in the gene world, in the genetic, like scientific genome world, it's insanely huge. Pretty much saying like, oh, like oh, Nick and Joe are just alike. No, what you're saying is Nick is literally. 50% of Joe. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So then when you factor in, we don't know their breeding history. Um, so if we know that temperament is 36%, we know that uh, our temperament is 50%, social ability is 36%, then maybe also they had horrible genetics. Maybe their, their parents of the dogs uh, were aggressive, which is a huge... I've seen a lot of huge genetic trait. Maybe they were aggressive. So now they have the genetic predisposition for aggression and they were isolated for months on end and they were only being fed four or five days a week yeah. and they had litter mate syndrome and their situation changed where they used to be so that's what I mean like this is a textbook case of what I'm talking about I've never seen a dog just snap it's always been when you really look at the story you're like well here's 30 factors and any one of them are bad and this situation has all of them and and, and I think it, it's fair to say guys we, we didn't want it to, this to be the case, right? We didn't want it to be the dogs. Uh, obviously, we, we love dogs. We don't want to see them, you know, euthanize. Um, but, you know, one thing that I can say for both of us confidently is we're, we're realists, right? We, we're both very realistic people. Very. And, you know, as, as much as I love dogs, at the end of the day, we still have to remember, guys, that they, they you know, we take them in like family, we love them like family, but they are dogs. We have to remember that. They're not as reliable as your six-year-old son in kindergarten right now when it comes to, you know, consistent behaviors and stuff. So, um with, with all that being said, I think that they did the right thing by, and 
you know, it's, I know it's controversial for me to even say this. I, I don't even say dog trainer. I say 100% those dogs should have been put down. Yeah, no I mean, I, 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 but you got to understand, I mean, people, no question. people are going to talk shit. Right? That's fine. But we're trainers. Wrong. We're trainers. <laughs> no, wrong. I agree. I agree. If someone disagrees that those dogs should not have been put down, you're wrong. No, I, and, and obviously I 100% agree with you. I mean, there's, there's definitely some cases where those dogs are a threat to anyone's safety. I'm sorry, but when I hear a story about a dog eating out of somebody's rib cage um, that should they op- have, yeah, that they opened up, that dog should be put down unarguably immediately, right? No question. I mean, what else do you do with it? You know, you can't do anything. Uh, secluded in a rescue by by themselves for the rest of their it, lives? It would, it would be extremely, like, even extremely is an underrated word. It would be extremely reckless to ever rehome a dog like that. Yep. Not even, and that's why I said, like, that's that's not even putting the emphasis on, on it. But, yeah, there's no choice but to put a dog down at that point. None. Yeah. No, I agree with you on that. Now, so, kind of the last thing on this. You know, the big thing now in this story is that they're waiting for the toxicology report to come in which takes about 90 days and there's a lot of people saying that this is going to solve the mystery and man i just it's going to come out that someone actually murdered her and used the dogs as a cover-up i actually saw that that she was getting those death threats and like someone did it and they just used the dog i mean it would make likely and then people was like it was a bear and oh Jesus! Like no, seriously, I read all of these like in spirit. It's like the 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 flat Earth theory people. <laughs> I I read now. I just offended like a quarter of the U.S. population, but it's like the flat Earth theory people. There's a ton of conspiracy. Someone's like, no, it was a larger animal that did it, and the dogs were trying to defend her. Um, these were the initial ones, and that's yeah. why the cops were forced to come out with yeah. more evidence. And then there was like she was getting death threats. Someone murdered her, and just staged it so it looked like the dogs did it and so there was all these things that came out and that's what forced law enforcement's hand to come out with more compelling evidence saying no she had dog those dog she had dog bite marks all over her body yeah. uh to the point where it was like someone was like unrecognizable so it was no question that it was a dog yeah and, and you know again it's it's tragic it's sad it's, it's horrible but it's horrible in every element. It's something that hopefully everybody can learn, you know, something from whatever that is. You know, uh, my advice would be don't get dogs from the same litter. That would be the first step. And then when you do get dogs, uh, don't be a shitbag. Yeah, you get know, them, get them treat, proper training, treat them right, socialization, treat and, them right. Don't yeah. be a dick, right? Just be a good owner. Be a That's good owner. Key. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know, man. It's it's just. It's one of those things where you just wish it didn't happen. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it, I can't imagine what her family's going through. And, and man, again, thoughts and prayers for them and, and her friends. Um, but, you know, I kind of feel like they, they need to put some closure on this case. And I don't know if that toxicology or, I mean, because even if, I mean, even if she was doing, you know, 18 lines of, of blow every single day. Well, that's day. irrelevant. What yeah. does that matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. So she was stoned walking them through yeah. the woods. Who cares? You know what I mean? It's still all she's vulnerable. Right. You know, it still happened. That's not going to prove anything. So, you know, I, the best thing for this family right now is closure. And I know we're not really helping that at the moment um, by talking about it. But this is it for us. I went, yeah. You know, I was waiting to have this conversation with you. And, I, and then I'm... I'm done with it. You know, I, I have my theory. Unless something crazy comes out, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the dogs did it and they made the right call putting yeah, the dogs down. Yeah, definitely. Right? And a perfect storm was created based off all the circumstances with the isolation, the litter mates, the not being fed, the change of scenery. Probably, I'm sure, probably the genetics isn't going to help. I, I, I could be wrong in this, but I highly doubt if they find um, the, the parents of those dogs the I highly doubt one of them is you know a world renowned therapy dog and the other one's a highly trained service dog maybe yeah. I'm wrong but I would probably bet a lot of money on that fact yeah for sure so um anyhow we'd be curious on uh what your guys's theories and thoughts are um if you're streaming us live on Facebook I'm assuming that's still working yeah. Um, if you're streaming us live on Facebook, leave a comment and uh, or 
Yeah, I want to hear some of the crazy theories. Going or come, on. you know, if you're if you're watching this, by the way, this will uh, hopefully be released on our podcast shows. Will be released hopefully Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, I, from my understanding, it's about three to seven days, and then I, I'm also gonna, you know, uh, we're gonna get it on Spotify and whatever. So if you if you're listening to this off of uh, iTunes. Then uh, you know, email us your theory. Yeah. Uh, info at allfleecek 9 training dot com, um, and and let us know. I'd be curious, you know. Um, but again, as far as I'm concerned, there's not going to be a whole lot that is going to say they they the police would have to drop some insane, yeah, just crazy that says these dogs didn't do it yeah. and we screwed up and we shouldn't have And that's why I said when you asked me like what's your theory I'm like the dogs did it yeah <laughs> it's that simple uh, cuz I mean cuz again you know a lot of people were like uh, you know the cops are covering this up blah, no blah, blah. It's so and guys sorry. like like my the thing is it's like are there shitty cops out there sure of course. It was the guy with the glass bullet on the grassy knoll right. that killed JFK. But this too. is this is the sheriff of the county and his entire department that stood by this, you know. So um, it, there's no conspiracy. No conspiracy. None. They, As there normally never is yeah. on any topic. Which which kind of brings me to the next thing I want to discuss um, with you and kind of get your thoughts on, just because I'm curious what your thoughts on, because this this. I mean, it's no secret to my clients that this drives me crazy. <laughs> um, you know, there's, and I forgot what the term is. It's anthro something. I'll look at Anthropomorphic? It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, putting so, uh, human emotions into your animals. Yeah, so, so essentially to where, you know, people get so attached to not just this story um, in the dog's behalf, but also their own dogs at home to where they, they're literally treating their dogs like they were human beings, you know, they're sleeping on the bed, they're, in a lot of cases, they're eating what they're eating for dinner, um, uh, you know, they're, they're talking to the dogs in a way that you and I would have a conversation when, that's just, yeah, essentially you're just, you're implementing human emotions onto domesticated animals. So my, my question to you, cause for me, stop. Like, that's my, my, my <laughs> thing on it. Like, don't do that. Like, I mean, I could go on for hours talking about why and actually give you some, some proof of why that's not uh, the smartest thing in the world to do. But what, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is that something that you think about often with clients or? Uh, it comes up often. Yeah. Cause I'm I, <laughs> like, usually, you know, people will say like in the crate, they're like, well, I want to put a Tempur-Pedic Simmons beauty yes, yes. Um, bed in the crate so that way he's comfortable and I'm like literally I'll say why would you want that in the crate and they're like well yeah I wouldn't want to sleep on the plastic bottom I'm like oh so you automatically assume that your dog wouldn't either right and they're like well yeah like just things like that like very uh, anthropomorphic style thinking and anthropomorphic. but yeah we yeah we I do have that conversation a lot uh, about things um and yeah you just you know i always say life's about balance you know it's about balance with your dogs about balance with your friendships your relationships i mean work everything even though i'm not so good at the work balance stuff but um but it's all about balance so you know i'm fine with some of that stuff sure. as long as the other things are in sure. place that's the key that you should take away is it's it's fine letting you know like letting your dog on furniture as long as other things are in place, like he gets off when I tell him to get off, he only comes up when I invite him. He's also super well trained in door manners and food manners, and when we walk, he heat like boom, boom. So as long as the other things are in place, it's fine. And I think it's that way with kids, it's that way with dogs, it's that way with friends, it's that way with work, it's that way with everything. It's just about balance. You yeah. can't, you can't just treat them like people, or you're gonna end up getting eaten, yeah, um, or bit. And you can't just isolate them for months on end and abuse them. Well, um, and, and even if you don't get bit, I mean, you're you're still you're you're going to create some behaviors that are going to drive you nuts. You know, I mean, if if you allow your dog to uh, essentially do whatever it wants because yeah, you, you let your kids do whatever they want, you know, in the house, then. Uh, technical difficulty there <laughs> um then 
there, nothing good is going to come out of that. You know, if you say they get on the couch and you have guests coming over, right? And you want your dog to get off the couch so your, your guests can sit down. Yeah. But the dog's like, no, this is my couch. I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? So it, in some cases, man, it, it's worse than others, obviously. But I think for the most part, you know, we, we, we just have to remember that they're dogs. So, and, and to be honest with you, I feel like they're not, I feel like I know they are. I know they're happier. Yeah, they're pack animals. They need structure. They need leadership. Yes. They need discipline. They, they just all the things that happen naturally in a in a natural habitat. Right. There's leaders. There's rules. You know, like the the most alpha male wolf is eating before the lower members. He's walking in front of the pack. You know, as I always say, you never see that. You know, when you talk about like pack leadership and stuff, is you never see like geese or ducks. Uh, like ducks lined up and like the mom is in the back you know what I mean yeah there's there's natural there's natural rules and guidelines and structure and all you're doing as a human is trying to replicate those things I go first I go out the door before you on walks you don't pull me you say beside of me or behind me like you don't eat until I release you. Like it's all the kind of same things that would happen in their natural environment. It, You're it, just replicating. That. And the truth is, we owe that to them, right? We're the ones who domesticated them, yeah. Right? The We're the ones who took them out. Of, exactly, exactly. That and that's kind of what I tell my clients is, you know, you gotta you gotta understand that. I understand that you love your dog like he's your son or your daughter or whatever, but he can't be treated the same, you know, you, you, and I'm not saying, I mean, don't take that the wrong way by any means. What I'm saying is, is like, you just can't let them do everything that you're going to let your, your kids do. And you, you can't, you know, when they get scared, you know, it's, you can't just, Oh honey, it's okay. Don't worry about it and start petting them because I mean, you're feeding that, you know, they don't force the negative behavior, right? They don't speak our language. So all they understand is, oh, this feels good. I'm shaking. I'm going to keep shaking. So I'm, this... get, I'm getting rewarded for showing. Right. This. Right. So, you know, it's, oh man, it's, it's definitely a subject I'd like to hit on. Uh, Maybe we'll later. on another topic yeah, another day. I'm pretty passionate about that one. <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, yeah. Sweet. We had a couple theories that rolled in uh, on Facebook. Um, let me pull those up really fast. Um, they were respectable theories too. They weren't like crazy, like flat earth theories. Uh, one says, I think the dog started fighting and she tried to break it up and they turned on her. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's possible. Uh, I, I definitely don't think that... Um, yeah, I mean that. That's hell. I even think it's possible that. Are you? Are is she saying that the dogs were fighting each other? Uh, yeah, they started fighting each other, and then she. They tried to break it up, and they because you know don't they redirect? Like yeah, I have, for sure. I have sure. a blog called "I Got Bit While Breaking Up a Dog Fight." Hmm. So it's a common thing that happens when you try to break up a dog fight. Redirects, turns on you, and maybe it kind of escalated like. The moose and squirrel one redirected on her, got a good reaction. Next one came in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's a good theory. Um, is, is another that one, go ahead. Another one came in and said, "I thought maybe she fell, hit her head, knocked herself out. She was bleeding, uh, and the dogs were hungry, and the rest is what happened. So she fell, knocks unconscious, blood or something from her head. Dogs like, hmm, I'm hungry, haven't been fed for a couple of days. Yeah. I mean, sure." I think that's a bit of a reach, and, but... And I, I think we'll... I mean, obviously, we'll never know what actually happened, like, ever, no matter what the autopsy... I mean, they're not going to say this is exactly what yeah, happened. Yeah, no, of so course. It's, no all, it's always going to be yeah. a theory. No one will ever know, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, at least, at minimum, I could hope for that her, her family at least gets peace in this in some shape or yeah. form to where... And, and I know... You know, a lot of times with, with death, closure is a big, big thing. And, you know, hopefully they uh, they can find that uh, with whatever they believe what happened. And, you know, it's always unfortunate, um, you know, when it's when, when they say pit bulls. Because then you have, I, I feel like you have kind of three sets of people. Um, like me, like neutral. 
and then the people that's like completely anti pit bull, and then the people that's like no matter what pro pit bull. Where I just look at it for what it is, um, you know, pit bulls. I know like eighty seven percent of the pit bulls in the U S. They rank I think third highest on passing um, temperament testing. So they're one of the most well tempered. Dude, balanced dogs. I love training pit bulls. I do too. I've said before numerous times on my Facebook Live videos, people's like, what's your favorite breed to train? I'm like, well, I have a Malinois, but if I had to pick one breed, I'd probably say a pit bull. Oh, they're so loyal, um, man. And, and keep in mind, there's like, I don't know, like 30 bites a year or something. Yeah. Literally, I think like 30, 34. And there's like 17 million pit bulls in the U.S. Yeah, so, but that, that's, so it's like, that's 34 fatalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's like, there's, so that's like saying, and keep in mind, that's what they're classifying as pit bulls sure, as well, sure. like, just like this, like there's no DNA being done to confirm that yes, this dog's a hundred percent pit bull. So it's what they're classifying. And as we know, 50% are misclassified. So, yeah. um, so it's like a statistic I read a while back. It's like based off the number of pit bulls in the U S the number of like bites in the U S two pit bulls, it statistically means literally it was like. That they're ninety nine point nine 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 five percent safe. So it was it was you you were literally a hundred times more likely to die choking on a hot dog. Yeah, um, and, and I can it, see it, how this story is going to make people gun shy about going to the shelters and and rescuing pit bulls. Well, they're one of the mo the most I think pit bulls make up twenty percent of the dogs in the U.S. Uh, as a statistic. Yeah. So of course, so that, these are all things that people don't consider when they say, ah, oh, pit bulls. They're mean, vicious animals. Is one of the things that people don't consider is a they make up 20, 30 percent. I think it's 20 percent of the dogs in the entire U.S. So out of the U.S. population, pit bulls make up 20 percent of them. So based off statistics alone, rationally, you're going to have more pit bull bites because they make up a fifth of the U.S. population of dogs. Right. Um, and I think the and I, I was reading this and I was a couple maybe a month ago. So. It was like if you look rationally at the number of this breed versus the number of bites, pit bulls rank like ninth on that. So the number of breed, the number of that breed in the U.S. versus the number of bites in the U.S., pit bulls rank. It was like eighth or ninth in in, in bites. So you know, but there, there's so much. And again, that's dogs that are classified as pit yeah. bulls, even though we know it's fifty percent are misclassified. So there's just so many things that people don't consider when they think about you know evil pit bulls and. You know, their bite pressure is 1,600 pounds, which is all bullshit, too. And, and what I would say is, you know, if you own a pit bull and, you know, be an advocate for the breed. Because right now, I mean, obviously they've had a bad rep for a while, but right now is when that breed needs you guys the most, you know, to, to say that not all dogs, you know, not all pit bulls are, are vicious, violent crazy well, animals. Yeah, statistically, 99.99%. But as you know, are, Nick, so. people don't give a shit about statistics Well, that's the key. The is, is it be, and that's why like, we kind of do these is right. for educational purposes. Yeah. To help no, educate people so people know that, like, you know, don't buy into the hype of, of stuff like that. You know, there was, uh, I forget who it was. Maybe it was Rob Lowe, I think, um, that, that actor. I think that's who it was. When all that, like, race tensions things were going on in the u.s you know in the last six months or something and you know everyone's on social media and he tweeted he said if everyone would just get out and talk to their neighbors they would realize that this really isn't that big of a problem you know it's like crazy right yeah it's like when you look at the news it's like oh i see this all the time you know but then when you actually break it down for what it is like rationally misidentification the number of dogs like da 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 you see it's an insanely low problem. I mean, uh, you're you're literally more likely to get the lethal injection at a prison and be hmm. killed than you are to be killed by a pit bull. Yeah. Like yeah. throughout the throughout the US, you're more likely to get killed by lethal injection at a prison. So so it's super it's insanely rare. And again, these are dogs that someone has classified as pit bulls, not yeah. that have been genetic DNA genetically tested. So, so, so I think that's important yeah, for everyone. To know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, be an advocate for your breed. You know, uh, maybe if you have a pit bull that has a good disposition, you know, look up therapy training. You know, let that dog be an advocate for that breed. You know, because they're getting a bad rep from what you know, uh, 
uh, dog fighting rings. Uh, yeah, it's all asshole owners. Yeah. Anytime they get a bad rep, you can almost always relate it back to an asshole owner. For sure. Literally. So, so like, the, I don't want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> so it's going to take the entire community, and when I say community, I mean the world, right? <laughs> To, uh, you know, get this breed out of that uh, label of, of vicious and, you know, whatever, to where we can get some of these dogs out of the shelters and get them into good homes. And instead of, you know, families going to look for the cute lab puppies, maybe they're looking for the cute pit bull puppies, you know, yeah. um, that were born at a train station, you know, down the road three months ago. You know what I mean? So just, just use that as an example, but essentially we just got to, you know, we got to come together as a dog community. And, you know, even though we both agree that those two dogs specifically should have been put down, yeah. we're not labeling that breed at all. No, it, this at has all, nothing yeah. to do with the breed of those and dogs. And if they did DNA testing, they probably wouldn't even be pit bulls. Agreed. Agreed. Maybe like 10% or something. Right. So, so that's kind of my big, uh, you know, outtake on this is let's educate everyone, but at the same time, let's also pr protect what little bit of, you know, decency that this breed is holding on to, and let's not turn them into the demonize them. Yeah, it, it's just the the shit that I've read online about pit bulls since yeah. this. And it's all happened. wrong. Yeah, I mean, no one actually. I mean, most and I, people that say it have no clue what they're talking about. Like most people on the internet. Yeah, for sure. And I try, <laughs> and, and I'll be honest, and I, 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 and I do very well at it for the most part. I try my hardest not to entertain this stuff when I see it online. When somebody puts off a ridiculous comment. Uh, about the breed or the situation in general, um, there's been a couple of times, so I'm not going to lie, where I had to step in and go, hang on here. Um, I know my wife Kelly has several times uh, <laughs> stepped in on a few uh, comments. So um, anyhow, uh, I, you know, that's that. I'd say we just leave it at that, let the theories come in, and if there's any really, really awesome ones that, you know, kind of make us wonder, then, you know, maybe we'll touch back on this uh, subject a little bit later, but um, let's get off of that. Uh, I know this isn't too dog-related, but big fight this weekend. Yeah, super big fight. I'm really excited for any of you guys uh, who are big UFC fans out there. Actually, uh, a former private seminar client of mine, Chris Cyborg, is uh, defending her title, uh, is it tomorrow, right? Yeah, it's tomorrow Saturday. against Holly Holm. Uh, I mean, Holly Holm is what, like 15-time world champion kickboxer? She's a beast. And Chris Cyborg hasn't lost in, I think, 13 years now. Hasn't Dude. lost. I mean, knocked out Gina Carano. I mean, it just destroyed everyone that steps foot. Literally destroys everyone that steps foot in with her. So I'm excited about that. And I did uh, Chris's dog named Fedor. Uh, paying homage to Fedor Melianko, one of the biggest MMA legends ever to live. Probably the greatest heavyweight of all time. Yeah, man. and uh, it's so funny watching Chris fight. Like, if you guys get bored, go to YouTube and type in Chris Cyborg Dog, and you can probably see my before and after video. And she's literally like the most sweet, kind, soft spoken person. Like, genuinely. A genuine, like, just nice, super awesome person. Yeah, and you'd never know it just seeing her get in there and just literally almost kill people. It's so funny because I remember you telling me that when you were out there training her dog. And she, you she, I, she literally texted me this morning. Did I had she? a text from her. Yeah, dude, she scares the shit out of me. Yeah, she's like, she's a beast. When you look at her in the cage, I mean, she looks violent. Man. Yeah, like she looks like she could. She never shows up to win by the judge's scorecard. No, no, <laughs> dude. There she a, shows up to, to get her paycheck in less than five minutes. But, I mean, you gotta take, you can't count Holly yeah, out, you can't, uh, She's I mean, the, the one that ended, 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 yeah, yeah. She ended her legacy, man. I mean, this is a girl who, you know, she's kick kickboxing, right? Kickboxing yeah. champion, and um, she has, man, she's got a ton of power and, you know, so anyhow, I'm, I'm looking forward to that fight. Like, crazy. yeah, it's tomorrow. You yeah. should actually come over for that. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Uh, Are you paying for it? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, in, in, in that I'm case, I'm only charging 15 per person for admission. Right, um, 
But yeah, I'm really excited about that. Chris is a good friend of mine. Like I said, literally, I'll show you, she texted me this morning, and uh, I stay in touch with her, and literally the sweetest, most awesome person you could ever want to meet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just I loved working with with her and her dog Fedor, which was awesome as well. But she's a beast. There's no doubt about it. I, I I'm excited to see how this one turns out. And then more. My Carolina Panthers made the playoffs last weekend. I know you don't give a shit about football. No. But yeah, that, that's the thing. Is like I'm I'm like the biggest. As anyone that knows me, like I'm like super alpha male. You know, like all the you know Marines, Secret Service, dogs. You know drinking, fighting, jiu-jitsu, MMA, like all that, but I'm just never a big football guy. Yeah, that, it never, it just, I just, just never got an American. And my brother is, my dad is, like everyone around me is, but I've never, I, I literally could not tell you the last time I watched a football game in its entirety, ever. So you grew up in a- Maybe like a Super Bowl when I was like 13. Dude, that's so literally. insane I didn't even me. watch the, the la last year's. I, ne I, I literally don't know last time. And it's crazy because I've trained, you know, D'Angelo Hall's dog, yeah, Team Captain dude, the Redskins. Awesome. He's awesome. You know, we've trained me and uh, Tank worked with uh, Chris Baker's dog, Swaggy. I mean, so I've I've done a lot of the players' yeah. dogs, and they're all, as you know, when you do like the Nats and the Caps, they're like, dude, anytime you want to come to a game, let us know. And I still talk to D. Hall, great guy as well. Super He's like, guy. yeah, when you want to come to a game, let me know. And I should, but I just, I never, I never have a desire to go. When Nick trained. Uh... Uh, D'Angelo Hall's dog, which those of you that don't know who that is, D Hall, baby. D Hall, he is a, uh, I mean, he's an he's incredible a uh, defensive back for the, is he still playing for the Redskins? He does. Okay, for the Redskins, he's been there for, it's probably got to be his 14th, 15th season. Well, maybe not. It's been a while. Anyhow, um, but super, super good football player. So he trained him, and then he uh, did the turnover in, uh, the Fredericksburg facility, and when D Hall came and all that, I was there and I met him. And man, what a down to earth, super, guy, huh? yeah, super good guy. That guy, amazing. Uh, he, I mean, we sat there because you know we, you don't want to bring up their profession and seem like I'm, I'm a, a fan, fan. You, you know. And, and just to add to the story, normally when I do uh, my turnovers with celebrities, you know, like Ryan Reynolds or. You know, D Hall or Cyborg or any of the people that you guys see me do, I, as Joe will tell you, I never let uh, people come to those. Almost never. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just because I want to keep it like. A and I don't think I planned experience. on being there. No, I but just... I knew that you were super fanboy. So I told Joe, I'm like, I was hey, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, hey, if you want to uh, be there, like, you know, we'll do the turnover and then you can show up really quick and say hi or something because I know you're a super fan and about him. Yeah, man, I was... And he just sure. stayed for like two hours. And, and we talked football. Yeah. Like, that was the craziest thing. And he was, he was excited man. to talk about it, too. He said... I, I forgot how it went, but he said something about training camp. And I asked him a question based off of what he said. And next thing you know it, man, we're talking football for probably 30 minutes in, in the uh, in the facility and like you know you just tell me you know a little bit of the ins and outs of the the behind the scenes and, yeah and man just super super cool yeah, really good guy he was eager to take pictures and yeah. you know so anyhow um yeah he was i'd actually like to uh talk to you not on this episode i mean this is probably a whole other episode is you know, on the clients that you train, you know, you have a lot He's of the coolest. Yeah, let's you know, not necessarily rate them. Let's hear about them. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, um, maybe we'll for, do an episode on on that um, for the ones we'll talk that about in a different episode. Yeah. yeah, for the ones I haven't met. So, but yeah, D Hall is a really good guy. But yeah, in summary, I just football doesn't do it for me. The only sport I watch whatsoever is UFC. Um, I do go to the because we've trained Max Scherzer's dogs. We've done Gio Gonzalez's dogs. Done. Aaron Barrett's dog. I mean, I've done Jason Worth's dogs. Andy Between Rando, both of us, we've yeah. literally done half over of half the, the team of the national yeah. uh, starters. Um, so I do go to an occasional game. I'm really good friends with Max Scherzer. I was just at his house for his birthday or his third Cy Young Award um, last month. So I do go to an occasional game for that, and I enjoy it. I'm just I I just ain't a guy that watches it on TV. Yeah. Like I, if I went to a game, which I I probably will, I would pro I would enjoy, I would have fun, I'd have some beer, but you wouldn't I'd get an Uber, do all that stuff, but I would enjoy it, but I just wouldn't go back and like, ooh, I can't wait to watch it on TV next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm a football guy. 
as you know, yeah. I love football. Um, I uh, I love the Carolina Panthers, and I think this is their year. But anyhow, <laughs> I think uh, you've said that for five years that I've known you, maybe six I, I years have, now, I have. and it's never been their year. But go, going back, <laughs> you brought up Max Scherzer or whatever. I got to give a quick shout out real fast to, and he'll probably never listen to this, but uh, Gio, I'll send it to him. He'll listen. Gio, this one's for Gio. Gio Gonzalez. He. Uh, he he did me a huge favor, and uh, we have a family member who is a huge Nats fan. He's a ten year old uh, special needs uh, child, and he's a huge Nats fan. And uh, Gio was his favorite player. Oh, that's awesome! And uh, so I asked Gio if he would send him a uh, a voice message on Christmas. Oh, and, super and he cool. did. Oh, he did, awesome. and he and it was. I mean, it was a good minute and a half voice message. You know wishing him Merry Christmas and, you know, kind of telling him that he, he wants me to take him to the game so he can meet him face-to-face. So, shout, huge shout-out to, yeah, to Gio ass. Gonzalez. Super good. And all those guys are yeah, amazing. All of them have been amazing. Uh, Anthony Rendon, you know, all the baseball players, all the Nats players that we've uh, we've met and trained their dogs and that become friends with, yeah. you know. Uh, just such Great humble, guys. down-to-earth, good people. So, shout-out to all those guys. So... So what else we have going on? Um, yeah, man. I mean, just the trip next week. Um, I'm still scheduled. I don't know if you forgot about this, but November 22nd, I was supposed to go to Saudi Arabia to train uh, the dog for the prince over there, part of the, Sa- the Saudi That's Arabia's right. royal family. And then there was a visa issue. My visa didn't come in in time. So then I had Vice President Cheney's new dog. I did that one in this place, and I started getting stacked up. So it looks like uh, I'm going to be going over there now in uh, maybe the mid to mid April or the first week in May. Um, and this is the prince? The prince of Saudi Arabia. He's part yeah, of uh, the royal family. It's big time, huh? Yeah, I'm really excited about it. How did he hear I've about never it? been to Saudi. so I've been to Iraq, but I've never been to Saudi. I'm sure it'll be a little bit different of an experience, though. Any idea how he heard about it? Yeah, you? crazy. Um, so... As you know, I did Henner Gracie's dog, the famous Gracie Jiu-Jitsu family. I trained his dog uh, three times now. I've done three private seminars, I think, at this point for Chokey. Uh, I go out there, I stay with Henner and uh, his wife, Eve, for a week. Amazing, great people, too. Right. And so to make a long story short, uh, I made their dog amazing. And I, th- I think he was flying Henner over to Saudi Arabia to do like private lessons in jujitsu with him. Gotcha. I know, I don't know how it happened, but anyway, him and Henner were doing private uh, jujitsu lessons. Like he's really big into it. And he told Henner like, hey, I got this new dog. It's a, it's a standard poodle, like five, six month old standard poodle. He's like, yeah, I need to get him some training. And Henner's like, bro. And that's probably literally what Henner said. Literally. He's like, bro, I got the perfect guy for you. Um, and, Henner gave him my email and my number, and he reached out to me, and we started talking, and got it arranged. So it was uh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, it was a pretty a pretty cool thing. Does, um, does it get bigger than that? Yeah, I mean the U.S. president, I would say, well, is I bigger mean, than uh, the royal family. I mean, in comparison, I mean it depends on, on what turn. I mean, so to someone in Saudi, the royal family is bigger, but. I would say to us, the the president, I mean, but I did just finish Cheney's dog. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say that would be the only what was, one upper. What maybe. was Obama's dog's name? Uh, Bo, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, a water, uh, I can't remember what dog Man. it was now. Um, Obama, hit us up. Yeah, hit us up, Obama. And Trump doesn't have a dog, I don't believe. Oh, I've never, I've never seen uh, Trump get a dog, so I don't think that that's sketchy. there is a first dog. <laughs> that's sketchy. A first dog. Is that what it's called? Yeah, know. the first dog. We didn't call it, I was in the Secret Service, we didn't call it the, the first dog, but I think it should be. Um, so yeah, I got that coming up. Um, all of those seminars lined up, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's... That's really it for me uh, right now. What about you? On, let's see, I don't even know what today is. On the second, I pick up um, a uh, dog for some service work uh, for the board and train. Um, This is actually turning into a story. Uh, (laughs) Apparently, there's going to be news cameras uh, 
following me around for some of this. Um, I don't have the details uh, right now of why, but I do understand that, you know, it, it is for uh, a kid and money was raised by, I believe, ABC Richmond or they were involved in it somehow. Um, anyhow, so that's coming up. And then right after that, I have my boy Shake and Bake's coming back. Remember Shake or Baker? When uh, uh, tracking the lab. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah Baker, shake and bake's yeah. coming back. He's coming back for a three week detection. Oh, uh, that's right. I yeah, saw that. So that'll yeah. be cool. And his brother, his new uh, baby brother, is coming with them for some obedience training. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, I always enjoy doing the uh, detection and the tracking board and training. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you try to cherry pick those. I've noticed. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot of fun, as you know, and uh, it's not as um, repetitive, I guess. Yeah. As well, it's always it's, yeah, it's very beings. different every day. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. And then I have uh, a dog coming up, I believe, from North Carolina. After that, and then I think I'm gonna take a break, man. From what? Just training for a little bit. Yeah. Um, Why is that? Focus. Well, you're putting a lot on my plate here lately. <laughs> <laughs> you're traveling a lot, so so uh, no. Focus more on the business. You know, we have we have good teams set up. You know, wherever we're at. So uh, you know, I trust them to to kind of take charge. Yeah. But I say that, Nick. I'll be honest, man. As you know, you know, I uh, I always. Uh, I've said that probably 50 times since I've known you that I'm going to take a break. Yeah, I've heard it a lot. I just, it's going to work out. I love it, man. <laughs> you know, it's what got me into this. It's my passion. Um, and, you know, uh, it's nice for a few weeks to be off. And then all of a sudden it hits me and I go, you Get know, so, and something's missing. You yeah. know, something's missing. So I say I'll take some time off, but we'll see. Well, it's like I've even told you before and I've had a lull in my, my private seminars. I'm like, Dude, come out and like let's shoot some epic videos. Yeah, like let's do something epic with dogs today. Yeah. just because I same I I get the itch. Yeah, uh, so I, mean, I definitely can relate to that. It, when you're a dog trainer, you're a dog trainer. So it's true. It's uh, you know it's something that we're obviously passionate about, and it's, it's not as easy as it sounds to just say I'm not going to train any more yeah. dogs and focus on the business. You know, it's uh. Again, it's what we love. It's like to I do. said earlier, it's all about balance. <laughs> and that's that's tough. You right? can't neglect the business and just train dogs, and you can't just do the business it's, and not train dogs. Yeah, so. It's totally tough. But I, I tell you what, man, I wouldn't trade this for the world. This is a yeah, it's a it's pretty a kick-ass gig and uh, awesome, uh, awesome experiences that I'm having. Meeting a lot of great people. I've met a lot of great people. Um, to include, you know, off-leash trainers, uh, clients. Yeah, just all around. You know, everybody. So, you know, it's it's uh it's been a it's been a ride. So anyhow. Yeah. Other than that, I think that's it, man. Yeah, sweet. I, I don't think I have anything else going on. So what are we uh what are we discussing next week? Do we have an idea yet? No. Uh, no? I'm sure something will come up and we'll just uh kinda wing it from there. If you guys have uh <laughs> any ideas of topics, we're not gonna make this so much of you know, how do I get my dog to stop peeing in the house type thing. This is more so of just kind of topics to discuss. Like, yeah. here are thoughts on yeah. dog training, theories, dog training. The yeah, it doesn't have to be dog training, you know. Uh, Flat earth theories, I mean. <laughs> uh, don't, I'm sure there's someone out there that's yeah. a big fan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just anything. Feel free to email us at info at offleashcaninetraining.com. And just say, hey, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts or opinions or theories on this. Dog training, non-dog training, breeds, I mean, treats, food, uh, really anything. Yeah. So, uh, and I'll put that email address in the comments below as well. And, and we're, we're going to try to make each episode between, uh, we already discussed hour, it, hour between an hour, hour yeah. and a half. So not crazy long, not, not too short. Hopefully enough to where it's on iTunes. It'll help you guys out on your uh, your. Com did you see traffic yesterday? I did. I did oh, not. Oh man! Oh, traffic was the worst it has ever been in Northern <laughs> Virginia history. And it was. I mean, there was a oh, shooting. Felt like, oh, I did see that. Yeah, I yeah, saw that. Dude yeah. hops out of the car and yeah, starts shooting at cops. And anyhow, ninety five. Oh man, it was bad. Anyhow. Uh, so hopefully we can help you guys out on your commutes. Uh, if you have any ideas on how to make it better, 
how to improve our show, yep. topics, blah, blah, blah. Hit us up, info at allfleashk9training.com. Do you have anything else, Nick? That's it. All right, we will uh, see you guys next Friday at 2. Thanks, guys.